Let's take a deep dive into Scripture with Father John Wardle and Danny Gallagher. During each episode, we'll be sharing our insights about the Bible passages presented on a related post on Father John's website, ancienthopes.org. To find the post we're discussing, go to the ancienthopes.org website and then find the Deep Dive into Scripture link at the top of the page. Our discussions on this show will follow the posts listed on that page. Here are your hosts for our Deep Dive into Scripture today, Danny and Father John. And welcome back to another deep dive into scripture podcast and show. And I'm Danny Gallagher. I'm here in the studio with Father John Wargle. Welcome back, Father John. Thank you, Danny. So today we're going to talk about days three and six. That's right. That's wow. right. So this Genesis story is uh, so amazing to me. The way that you're the way that you're helping me to see it in a different way by splitting the first three days, next three days, and look at the verses in ways where God separates and names and then fills that space with whatever it is that he's filling it with. Right, so right. so what's going to happen today on day three? Well, day three, God separates the waters, the oceans, from the land. Mm-hmm. And what's implicit is the seashore. Okay. okay. Oh. So I... I don't know. You love this the ocean, don't you, Danny? I mean, you live in I Maryland. Do. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We went to the beach when, when I was young <laughs> a lot. Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, and you stare out into the waters and it does something to you, right? But um, you're glad you're not out there <laughs> because a ton of neem <laughs> we true. talked about last week That's right. is, uh, is lurking just beyond <laughs> to, to devour you, you know? Yeah. so I haven't ever had the experience of being around a shark or anything like that when I was in the water. Yeah. But I have seen these podcasts of these poor people who are oh, out in Lord. the water and there's a shark coming toward them and yeah. they can't see it. And the people on the beach are screaming. Oh, my You know, oh, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, what, yeah, right, right, right. And that's real. That's, I'm not talking the, jaws or anything. That's I'm talking real. <laughs> real, you know. Yeah. And and so that's, that's what land uh, separates is separating us okay and creating dry land from the chaos of the of the watery deep and so he lets the chaos exist just like he lets the um the darkness he just puts boundaries on them and boundaries is a is an important idea in our creation story okay because boundaries create beauty it puts everything in their place right i was going to say I, when I think of boundary, I think of keeping me safe. That's right. You yeah. know, the bound, a boundary, you know, the wall that keeps me from going over the edge of something. Exactly. Keeping me safe. Exactly. However, Danny, okay, uh, we're not speaking here just of physical boundaries, but parallel to that would be moral boundaries. Ah, okay. Which is law. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the ancient Hebrews would understand their law to be as part of creation as the physical universe. Oh, okay. The boundaries that are all around them physically parallel and are associated with the moral boundaries. Sure. And both of those things make life beautiful. Yep. Okay. That that makes sense to me. If you break boundaries, what happens? Bad things. (laughs) Right. If you start planting a tree in your in your neighbor's front yard. Okay, without talking to him, what, what right. happened? Yeah, he'd be unhappy. Bad boundaries, yes, right? Bad, bad. <laughs> I broke broke the rules, broke the boundaries. Right, right. Yeah. So same thing here. Uh, morally, if you have bad boundaries, you are actually defined in the Bible as a sinner, hmm. having bad boundaries. I'm wondering about this bad this bad boundary thing because 25 years ago, I built a treehouse in uh-huh. one of the trees in our yard. Yeah. And it was great. The kids loved it. You know, it was when they were little, they're growing up, growing up. And now new kids are coming in our yard and they love the treehouse. But a little while ago, I noticed that the treehouse was starting to sag a little bit. Uh-oh. It's it's old, right? Yeah, right. And the tree is very old too. Right, it's right. probably a hundred years old. Yeah. And last night, the whole tree 
fell down. No. Whole kidding. tree. Right, this right. tree is probably four to five feet in diameter. Big one. So okay. maybe 12, 13 feet around. Yeah. And, uh, and the whole tree collapsed Is that down. the one in the front yard that looks no. like, like um, tree beard or yeah, something like right. that? I, okay. <laughs> Not that one, thank goodness. <laughs> no, this is one that's in the, in the backyard on the side. But I think that I broke the boundaries by putting that tree house in there. And so after a long period of time, again, the tree is old and it was dying anyway, but mm-hmm. the tree just decided its roots couldn't take it anymore. And <sighs> I well, broke, it's broke the boundaries. There are laws in the, in the, in the Old Testament where you are responsible for anything that might be dangerous uh-huh. and cause people harm. So, sure, yeah. so yeah, I mean, so, and now when you first build it, that wasn't an issue, right? Right. Yeah, of course. Uh, but you know, now, well, now it, it's not an issue either. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm glad it fell at night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, God is good, isn't he? Yes. Thank goodness. Thank right. God. Okay. So uh, boundaries make the world livable and wonderful. It, it makes the temple very very beautiful. And then, of course, by making um, dry land separating from the ocean, we've got a floor. we got the floor in which we humans can live in the temple. Mm-hmm. And um, on this floor, we have plants. Okay. Now, I, I don't have much of a green thumb, but I do like plants. How, how about you, Danny? Are Me you- too. Yep. I have, a, I have a garden, you know, with yeah. uh, Peaches, pears, and apple oh trees, uh, over. Yeah. <laughs> raspberries, blueberries, uh, and I do have a, a garden with just some vegetables. When do you have the time and energy to do that? That's it's a, It takes a lot of work. <laughs> I also have, what I really do love is that I also yeah. have a perennial garden right, right. for bees, you know, to, to oh, cool. be pollinator. It's yeah, a pollinator yeah. garden. Yeah. And those, so that's really fun, and that's fun to take yeah, care of. But act- it's a lot of work. Oh, not actually. I got bees in my backyard. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, the box thing. You oh, know, I don't do really? anything with it. The bee uh-huh. man comes and t- does it. But oh, nice. I want to create something like that, too. See, there's something about innately about us creatures mm-hmm. that have to have plants. Oh, okay, yeah. now, oh, obviously, because we have to eat, and everything comes from plant life. Mm-hmm. But the life of the plants are amazing. Yes. Yeah. They and are. and being able to watch them grow. One that's of the right. things that's really cool is we have asparagus in the yeah. yard and when a, an asparagus pops up out of the ground. Right. You got to watch it because in 2 days it'll be a foot tall. You can almost sit there and watch <laughs> it come out of the ground. I'm You're telling amazed. you it's it's, it's, You're yes, amazed. it's, it's amazing. really incredible. Right. And you know that asparagus in in some ways is more profound than anything that was made before. It. You're listening to the Deep Dive into Scripture radio show and podcast with your hosts, Danny Gallagher and Father John Wargle. The text that we're discussing can be found on the ancienthopes.org website, and then select the Deep Dive into Scripture link at the top of that page. Let's get back to our show with Danny and Father John. Right. And you know that asparagus, in, in some ways, is more profound than anything that was made before it. Mm. I mean, you've got stars, you've got planets, you've got the rakia, you've got all these things that are inanimate, right? Yep. But don't have life. Ah, yes, right. Life is a great mystery. Mm-hmm. And we should never, ever look at it and just yawn. I mean, uh, you know, it just, <laughs> right. it just, we should be, we should be stunned all the time. So plants are so important. Okay, animals are so important. Mm-hmm. You know, I growing up, I never had a dog. I had a hamster, you know. <laughs> That's another story. Yeah. I did get, the kids did, of course. The mom, my, my wife, and the kids, they, they said, okay, we want a dog. And I said, listen, we're not going to get one. Okay. Wow. They kept on working on it and working on it and working on me. Then, of course, I said, okay, we'll get a dog. But you got to take care of it, right? Yeah. Okay, so I we get the happened. dog, and after a couple of years, the kids leave the house, and then I got the dog. It's my dog. I've become the alpha in the house. Okay? Sure, and yeah. Of course, I get so attached to it that after, you know, we had to put it down a couple oh, of years no. ago. It just broke my heart. Oh, of but we, had, we have a little garden out there. But that dog um, didn't have a brain in its head. I mean, <laughs> you know, but it was just so... It was a Westie, and, and Westies are not known for being smart. And, uh-huh. and what keeps them from being slaughtered by their owner is that they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> 
You just say, I'm going to get, oh, I just love you, you little yeah, dog. Yeah, right, right, right. So, um, <laughs> it, it, you know, you find out that, you know, c- connection with animals is so important. I, right. I think I talked, did I talk to you about on these podcasts about the um, koi pond I made out there? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I, my daughter, she goes out and she puts food on her hand and, and these things come up and they, they nibble on her fingers. She Amazing. can scratch under their chins. She can uh-huh. pat them. Oh, no. And you're looking, and I look at these, these fish who are looking at me. Right, yeah. And I'm saying, this fish is more complex than anything in the universe. Wow. And right here, I get to see it. Yeah. You know? And, and yeah. it's, you know, so. And it's staring at you. Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feed me. Feed, feed me. That's me. what it's saying. Yeah. <laughs> right. So a plant life, animal life, so, so important. Okay. Then on, this is, um, you know, this sort of comes up on day three. Then you go over to day six and you see that the big land animals are made. And, of course, they're the. The most sophisticated, you know, they're living things, they're yeah, big, big living things. Um, you know, we really think about how close historically the human journey through history. You can't imagine it without animals, can you? Right. No, of course, yeah. Right. And and more, for more than you know, for social kinds of things, you know, with like dogs. We were talking about our dogs, social connections with animals, and then also for food. You know, right. So what we have, of course, you know, um, the last thing to be made on day six is humanity. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that, that's too big to talk about in this podcast. We'll have to do that in the next podcast. Okay. But, but here, um, the cadence of the days, you mentioned last time it was like a, the, the liturgy. Sure. It, it, oh, it, yeah, yeah. It, and it's very like a liturgical. Song, like a chanting, yeah, you know, a, a chant chanting. through the verses. Yeah. And it may even be looked up as a cosmic dance. Now, Danny, I don't dance. Okay? Uh, <laughs> I'm not very good. I like to say Can't I even dance like that. a wounded candle. But, you know, <laughs> uh, but the thing about this is this, you know, von Balthasar, you know, his cosmic liturgy called his great book, which, which is a wonderful book. Um, he, he looks at it, every, everything as a cosmic dance and uh-huh. it's sort of just set in motion here, everything moving very gracefully, you know? Sure. And, and I, if you look at stars and planets, yeah. now that we know how they move, right. you know, and, uh, how yeah. we move around them, that's mm-hmm. uh that is a dance for yeah, sure. It is. And that's how we experience it here. And that's exactly what it wants us to do. You know, once we get out from in the way out in the outer reaches of the universe, you know, we're, we're getting further and further away from our home. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the house that God made, I, and I'm not quite sure if I understand these um, people like um, Elon Musk who wants to, you know, populate Mars or something right. like that. Then given his brains, he probably will figure it out by the time he dies. But yeah, who probably. wants to be on Mars, right? right. It, it... <laughs> I don't want to be away from that far from home. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. So the takeaway here is creation is presented to us as a process of separation from the chaotic elements and setting boundaries and boundaries is what make things beautiful, both physically and morally. And so I think a good question for all of us as we end this whole thing and we is, you know, how, how important are boundaries to, to us? You know, that's a good thing to think about. I mean, do we really think of boundaries and how important they are both in the physical world and the spiritual moral well, which is law. Sure. The yeah. law of God. Mm-hmm. And the people certainly understood that law as being a very integral part of who they were. That's right. At the time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the law is part of the liturgy. Yes. You know, you know, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's the dance. It's the dance too. Just think Danny, when I, in the next world, I'll, I'll be graceful and I'll be part of that dance. <laughs> <laughs> hard to imagine. But... <laughs> it is hard to imagine. Okay, good. Well, thanks a lot for talking about days three and six, and we'll see everybody next time on okay, Deep Dive into Scripture. Mm-hmm. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please go to ancienthopes.org and the Deep Dive into Scripture link on that page for related text. You can find more episodes of this show on the WSJF podcast server 
or on the Apple and Spotify podcast services. See you next time when we take another deep dive into Scripture. Don't forget this week to open that Bible and dive right in.